Hello everyone, today we are going to learn about the plastic material. Now let's see what is a plastic. So plastic is a synthetic material which can be created by the polymerization of the hydrocarbon molecules in the long chain under the heat, pressure and the catalyst. The petroleum crude oil is used as a raw material to process the polymers and we are using around 4% of total crude oil to process the polymers. Now let's see the classification of the plastic based on the polymer structure. They divided into three types, thermoplastics, thermosets and elastomers. The thermoplastics have loose polymer chains that break apart when heat is applied. The thermoplastics can be heated and reshaped many times so they are recyclable. They are lightweight and high strength polymers. They act as a flame retardants. The thermoplastic material used in making sports equipment, toys, automobile parts, sealant, and adhesives, cases, coating materials, containers, cans, etc. For example, PP, PC, ABS, nylon. Now let's see the thermosets. Thermosets have rigid cross-linked polymer structures that once set with the heat then cannot be reshaped. The thermoset plastics offer enhanced chemical resistance, heat resistance and structural integrity. The thermoset plastic material used in making construction equipment panels, electrical housing and components, insulators, cell tower tops, heat shields, circuit breakers, motor components, disc brake pistons, etc. For example, melamine formaldehyde and epoxy resin. Now let's see the elastomers. The elastomers can deform and return to their original shape uh, almost instantly. Their molecular structure is like a spring which can be compressed. They have low creep resistance. The elastomers are usually used in making industrial tools, appliances, belts, molds, lubricants, shoe soles, baby specifiers, seals, tire, wire or cable insulation, etc. For example, TPU, TPE. Now let's see the classification of the plastic based on the molecular structure. The plastic is divided into amorphous and semi-crystalline. The amorphous have randomly ordered molecular structure. They soften gradually as temperature increases. They have better dimensional stability and less likely to warp. They bond well by using adhesives. They have good chemical resistance, good stiffness and strength. They have superior impact strength and are best used for the structural applications. They have excellent resistance to the hot water and steam. They are isotropic in flow. They don't perform well as a bearing or the wearing component because of their high coefficient of friction. They have poor fatigue resistance. They have lower chemical resistance and they are sensitive to stress cracking. For example, PC, ABS, acrylic, PVC, etc. Now let's see the semicrystalline. The semicrystalline have highly ordered molecular structure. They have sharp melt points. They remain solid until certain quantity of heat is absorbed. They are extremely good for the strength and the toughness. They have excellent chemical resistance and very good stiffness. They have very low coefficient of friction. They have strong intramolecular forces. They are extremely good for the structural loads and applications involving gear. They have a sharp melting point that makes them difficult to thermoform. They are anisotropic in flow. They have dimensional instability compared to am amorphous polymers. Their impact resistance is average. Example, PP, nylon, HPDP, acetyl, PBT, LDP, etc. 
Now let's see the classification of the plastic based on attraction to the moisture. The plastic is divided into two types, hygroscopic polymers and non-hygroscopic polymers. The hygroscopic polymers have strong affinity to attract the moisture, will absorb moisture onto their molecular structure if they expose to the ambient air. The internal moisture can be removed with drying the polymers at the temperature above the boiling point of the water. The hygroscopic polymers includes nylon, ABS, acrylic, PET, PBT, polyurethane, polycarbonates, etc. Now let's see the non-hygroscopic polymers. They do not have affinity for the moisture. Any moisture collected is absorbed on the surface of the pallet. The typical moisture collection is due to the condensation. The moisture is easily removed by passing the sufficient warm air over the material. The non-hygroscopic polymers include PVC, polypropylene, polystyrene, polyethylene, etc. If we use a polymer without drying, then moisture will turn into steam and cause several problems such as bubbles, spray marks, brittleness, sink marks, irregular moldings, nozzle rules, and in some polymer cases like PET, PBT, PC, nylon, or TPU, the exposure to moisture at processing temperature causes a chemical reaction known as hydrolysis which breaks the long chains into the shorter fragments and reducing the strength and other properties. To achieve a good quality part, it is important to take the right steps on the shop floor to control moisture. The non-hygroscopic polymers also contain a moisture and may require drying before molding even though they do not absorb the moisture on molecular level. The nylon 6 is one of the more hygroscopic resin that is capable of containing water as much as 9% of its weight. Now let's see the plastic additives. Based on the application requirement, certain plastic material properties can be improved by adding the plastic additives. Plastic additives are divided into different types like fillers, frame retardant, plasticizers, stabilizers, etc. The fillers can be used to reduce the bulk of plastic and makes them cheaper. Or it is used to improve the mechanical properties like strength or hardness. For example, sawdust and limestone. The flame retardant reduce the risk of combustion. They create a chemical reaction which stops the combustion. The plasticizer reduces the softening temperature of polymer and makes them flow easier. It increases the flexibility of the material. The stabilizer improves the material durability by stopping the plastic degradation by the various factors like UV rays, oxidation, acid, etc. Dye is used to get colored parts. Solid lubricants can be used to get improvement into the sliding characteristics and foam is used to get a uh, foaming agent is used to get a foam production. Now let's see the plasticizers. The plasticizers are non-volatile chemical solvents and they are used throughout the plastic industry to improve the polymer properties such as flexibility, palliability, durability, longevity, biodegradability and extensibility. The plasticizer affect the properties of the material without fundamentally changing its basic chemical makeup. It also helps to improve the product's elastic modulus. By modifying the type or the amount of plasticizer, the properties can be tailored to meet requirements like high tensile strength or even soften the material. The plasticizers acts as a lubricant among the polymer chains to reduce the rigidity. Without them, the synthetic polymer material would be too brittle and rigid for any practical applications. 
For example, the plasticizers give rubber its extensibility. The migration of the plasticizer out of their host plastic leads to the loss of flexibility, embrittlement, and the cracking. For example, this decade old plastic lamp cord shown into this image crumbles when it is flexed because of loss of the plasticizers. Now let's learn about the fillers. Fillers act as an extender for saving the plastic material and therefore it reduces the cost. It improves the processing of the material and their properties like stiffness, impact strength, resistance to the thermal distortion, electric conductivity and dimensional accuracy. The top filler material used are ground calcium carbonate, precipitate calcium carbonate, kaolin, talc and carbon black. The filler materials can affect the tensile strength, toughness, heat resistance, color, clarity, etc. A good example of this is addition of talc to the propylene. This notably enhances its properties including greater stiffness, rigidity, higher impact strength, better heat creep, chemical resistance, especially increased dimensional stability even after molding. The most of the filler materials used in plastic are mineral or gas based materials. The particulates and fibers are the main subgroups of the filler materials. Longish or the fibrous additive increases the mechanical properties of reinforcing materials. For example, PA6-GF15, polyamide plus glass fiber 15% of the mass. PA6-GB30, polyamide 6 plus glass balls 30% of the mass. and POM-MD20 acetal plus mineral powder 20% of the mass. Now let's see the example of the filler. So performance improvement of the PA6 because of the addition of 30% glass fiber as a filler. So you can see here mechanical property improvements. Now let's see the stabilizers. The polymer stabilizers are the chemical additives which may be added to the polymetric material such as the plastics and the rubbers to inhibit or retard their degradation. The stabilizers are used at all stages of the polymer life cycle. They allow plastic items to be produced faster and with the fewer defects extend their useful lifespan and facilitate their recycling. Antioxidant inhibits the auto oxidation that occurs when polymers react with the atmospheric oxygen. Antiozone prevents or slow down the degradation of material caused by the ozone. The UV stabilizers absorb and dissipate the energy from the UV rays as a heat typically by reversing the intramolecular proton transfer. This reduces the absorption of UV rays by the polymer matrix and hence reduces the rate of weathering. Acid scavengers also refers as the antacid neutralizes the acidic impurities especially those released as HCl. PVC is susceptible to the acid catalyzed degradation and the HCl is being derived from the polymer itself. The metal deactivators, metal ions such as those of Ti, Al or Cu can accelerate the degradation of the polymers. This is particular concern where the polymers are in direct contact with the metal such as in wiring or cable. Biocides uh, 
Degradation resulting from the microorganism are known as biodegradation involves its own class of special biostabilizers or the biocides. Heat or the thermal stabilizers, they are mostly used for the PVC as unstabilized material is particularly prone to the thermal degradation. Now let's see the flame retardants. The flame retardants are the chemical compounds added with the objective to inhabit or retard the ignition or the burning of the plastic. To prevent a combustion, it becomes necessary to design a thermally stable polymer that has lesser probability of decomposing into the combustible gases under the heat stress. The flame retardant additives can be indicated by the symbol FR followed by the code in bracket in front of the material. The code 30 is used for the nitrogen compound, 75, 76 used for the silicon and 80 used for the graphite. The flame retardants reduces the flammability of the material under the conditions of the fire the use of the frame retardant significantly increases the escape time. They prevent the fire or the retard its growth and spread. Now let's see the conductive additives. Because of the electrostatic charge, the plastic attracts the dust and the negatively charged particles. The static inhibitors provide reduction of the surface resistance of the plastic and avoids the electrostatic charge generation. The special black uh, carbon, uh, graphite, uh, carbon fibers as well as the metal like powder flex fibers decreases the electric conductivity of the plastic and depending on the type and the portion. Now let's see the global plastic additive usage. The plasticizer usage is 54%, flame retardants usage is 11%, impact modifier has 11%, antioxidant has 10%, antimicrobials has 4%, UV stabilizers 6% and in other 4%. So that's all for this video. If you like my videos, please share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.